into it. Yeah, let's get right into it. So paper, planes, and passports are the paper, financial literacy, which is important in our community. So we promote that. Um, something that we definitely want to you know, embody and show people that you can become financial liter- financially independent. The planes, obviously, is the, tra- is the travel portion of what we do. And then the passports. And passport can be a, a number of different things. It can be um, your credentials that get you in a room. It could be um, your actual passport to get you in a country. But your passport, the things that enable you to get to where you want to be. So paper planes and passport, it's travel, but it's more than that. And it's broader than that. And that's kind of where the name stems from. Like I pulled you out of hat, pull you out of bag from out of mag if you want that. Pull up in the slab and pull off with you in my lap. Top down with Tuesday happy hour where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world. And today, as y'all see, I have my amazing co-host still with me. She hasn't left y'all. Um no, please I'm tell them who you are. Tell them who you are and what do you do? I'm Jackie. I'm Paige's fiance. Um, I'm also the chief operations officer for the New York Urban League and um, the executive director for the Royalty Project. Okay, okay. And we are here honored by two, di- a dynamic duo, babe. Like, I mean, I thought we were a couple goals, but this right here, <laughs> oh man, can y'all, can y'all tell us who y'all are and what y'all do? Mm-hmm. Hello, um, my name is Shanta Claire Graham, and this is Erica Graham, um, and we are Paper Planes and Passports. Um, I am an international director of, of strategic initiatives and also the president of Paper Planes and Passports. Um, yeah, and this is... I'm Erica Graham, an owner, travel agent at uh, Paper Planes and Passports. So we help curate all of your trips, all of your group trips, um, and so much more. Yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. we, we take care of all your travel needs. Anything you need travel related, we definitely got you. And we'll oh, so you y'all talking that. about straight oh. concierge, huh? So yeah. oh, definitely. Most definitely. Most Global definitely. concierge service. Global services. concierge service. Global con. Y'all hear that? Globe. Listen, they talking cloth talk right here. I'm going to take something <laughs> out of Khaled's book. That's cloth yeah. talk right here. They said their money is longer than paper planes and passports. That's what they're saying right now. <laughs> but that's actually what, if you think about it, pay, and we'll talk about more about what paper planes and passports mean. Go ahead. And let's and talk about it right now. Yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, let's get right into it. So paper, planes, and passports are the paper, financial literacy, which is important in our community. So we promote that, um, something that we definitely want to you know, embody and show people that you can become financial liter- financially independent. The planes, obviously, is the, tra- is the travel portion of what we do. And then the passports. And passport can be a, a number of different things. It can be um, your credentials that get you in a room. It could be um, your actual passport to get you in a country. But your passport, the things that enable you to get to where you want to be. So paper planes and passports, it's travel, but it's more than that. And it's broader than that. And that's kind of where the name stems from. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. I was like, yo, that's kind of flashy. I'm like, right. okay, paper play. I gotta follow them real quick. You know what I mean? That's 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 usually what grabs people's attention yeah. at first. Like they love the name, paper planes and passports. And then when we break it down and kind of how we came up with it, and then we start talking about our mantra, explore, immerse, embrace, people really start to grasp it, but it's definitely an attention grabber. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the story behind paper planes and passport. This love story, right? Like yes, from individually. Yes. So I'll, I'll let you speak. You go, go ahead. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we started traveling. He said, where's your front? Oh, oh where y'all from? Not I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm from yeah. Chicago. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, I'm from Chicago originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's from South Carolina originally. Yep. And we met in Chicago. Uh, we moved to Atlanta 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, we are stationed in Atlanta. Yeah. That's the speedy so version. How did you got yeah. me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She, she's skipping over the good part. She, she, she's just going straight to the punchline. How did you guys meet in Chicago? Yeah, so, um, as I mentioned, I'm the director for International um, Strategic Initiatives. So I work for a healthcare company um, in my full time job. And um, we both worked for the same company at one point. And that's kind of how we met. Um, we both were doing kind of. Ex- external things like she was modeling. Um, I was into the music business. Um, 
And we were doing things externally and kind of cross paths outside of that. Um, and then she started working for the company. Um, we worked together side by side for a while. Um, and then at one point, um, we kind of moved in different directions in, within the same business and decided to try dating um, because we had very good chemistry. There were actually rumors going around the company that we were already dating because of the <laughs> chemistry that we had, um, which was really interesting uh, <laughs> because at that time I was her. She was my direct report. She worked for me. Yeah. Uh, we, my, my boss hired her, put her on my team. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, but, you know, there was nothing funny going on during that time. And then when we parted ways, we decided to, you know, give it a try. We had yeah. good chemistry at work. We had good. We chemistry. knew we could work we well together. Each- definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. We had some of the same goals um, within our day jobs and then outside of our day job. So we were able to kind of put those two together. And yeah. here we are. So, yeah. So then we like I said, we, we decided to give it a shot. We dated for a while and then kind of knew right away, like she was the one. And yeah. And then fast forward, we started traveling and yeah, that's kind of where it originated. Because like I said, when we parted ways, I went into the international division. We were already travelers, if you will, but never internationally together. Uh, And so when I started traveling for work internationally, one of the first trips I had to take um, was to Sweden and um, I had to be there for her birthday. And so I was like, hey, get your passport, pack your bag, you're coming to Sweden. We went to Stockholm and took her there with me for a week. And I think that's what really Girl, bit the, I was the, stuck the international that. travel bug really big. bit her at that point. And I was like, oh, this is what this is like. <laughs> and because he traveled so much, that was kind of how we dated for the first years because he had to be gone for two and three weeks at a time. And mm-hmm. so... I got a chance to meet up with him in different places. Again, for my birthday, we went to China. To Beijing, Beijing. for the following. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her birthday. I kind of set the bar really high for birthdays. <laughs> I mean, pretty, pretty high. Hey, babe, it's um, I'm going to be away for a couple. Yeah. I'm going to Stockholm. Listen, to Stockholm. remember how I said y'all was going to be flexing on us real quick? <laughs> so let, I'm going to take this a couple steps back. And this is a question that I stole from Jackie, right? Okay. So who shot their shot first? Um, that I think that would be me. You. That would be me. Yeah. Um, I was, I'm, I'm not notoriously aggressive when it comes to, you know, step into a woman if I'm honest um but and I came out of a previous relationship you know divorce for a couple years was like I'm never getting married again like totally off limits laid eyes on this woman and was like (laughs) we sat down we had lunch and it was like I'd known her forever yeah. And, and like literally it was so odd because we were having the same conversations at, uh, the, same at the same time. We didn't know this until you know, later on, until about a year later. But I called my guy and was like, oh, my God, I just met this girl. She's amazing. Like, I know I said I'd never get married again, but, bruh, she might be the one. And this was while y'all were working together or this is after? This, this is, while, is this, while we literally this was our first meeting. First as- meeting. My as my manager, wow, we were meeting. He was learning about me, what my goals were for work and outside of work, obviously. And we were just getting to know each other. And it was like our first sit down. And I was just like and at this, like I said, at this point, this is where your old co-workers would be like, I knew it. Even yeah. though they didn't get together, they could feel the chemistry. Yeah, exactly. Everybody did. I mean, we were literally finishing each other's sentences yeah. at work. And it was so awkward because everybody was like, hold on, y'all, wait a minute. This is, this is y'all too close. And I'm like, no, I'm like, no, like, no, we, we never by the same way we speak the same language. Yeah. And now, Erica, were you feeling the same attraction at the same oh, yeah. time? So, while he was having that conversation with his boy, so after he left um, the meeting, I took a break. I was like, called my girl. I was like, yo, I like my manager. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, we were traveling together for work. Yeah, um, we got, spent a lot of time together. And I was first actually training year. her. And... He was training me to do my new position. And yeah. it was, 
we just spent a lot of time together. So we got to know each other professionally. We got to know each other personally um, very quickly. So it, it, it happened organically. I will say that. Yeah. And it wasn't like, okay, like right after that, I was like, okay, we need to, we started dating. No, it took some time because again, she was my direct report. So I couldn't really do that, Mm -hmm. but I I felt it. She felt it, but we weren't like, we were kind of like ignoring it. Right. And then when people would say stuff, we'd be like, nah, like not her, not her. Like that's the homie. (laughs) Like, nah. And then, like I said, when we, when I moved to the international division, I was like, Hey, what's what's like What's that's up? that's when I formally <laughs> shot the shot, like um showed up at her birthday party and really kind of put tried yeah, to put he, the romance he, on it. Like it was it he was set it, was, it out. Yeah, it was a thing. He, I commend you guys for keeping it professional until you were no longer working together directly. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean that was something that we had we actually had a conversation about that because we knew we we had vibes. Um yeah. And because of what everybody else was saying, I was like, yo, I feel some kind of way because all these people talking crazy <laughs> at work. Yeah. And we like really had that conversation and said, you know what? OK, so how do we do this? Where where do we see this? And we were like, well, we can't date right now because we yeah. are direct reports. Mm-hmm. Um, so and, he- and not only just that, right, as as. Black representatives, because you guys represent the entire black race, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> of course, you know, it's, you know and true. it's 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 even worse for you, Erica, right? Because you know, every, all your accomplishments would have been attributed to him, right? Mm, um, that's that's yeah. definitely big because one, the two most productive black folks in the company are together ish. That's what they were saying yeah. already. I yeah. mean, they were, they were already discrediting what I knew, what I could bring to the table. Oh, to she's the only doing that because, because of... yeah, I'm only working mm-hmm. from home and having this new position because of him. And yeah, it was yeah. a lot of that. And I really, I had to defend myself a couple yeah. times because I was like, yo, <laughs> you want to stop talking crazy because you don't know what you're talking about. We are not right. dating yeah, yeah. Um, at that time. Yeah. So yeah, but when we did, when we did take that step, when he moved over to international, it. But I still, you know, even then, I still kept it professional. Yeah. I went to you know, a HR. I went to people in the organization and said, we are dating. Mm-hmm. We are a thing. We are not no longer direct reports. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make, just to let people, let people aware, like even the CEO of my company at the time, <laughs> like we crazy, crazy story. We won a trip. Um, it was a competition within the company and you get to bring my management team and your significant others. My significant other works for the company at the time. So, right. so the C, even the CEO of the company knew about it. Like it was no thing. Like, yeah. and um, so, yeah, like I, I tried to be as professional about it as you, and like, and like um, he said, like, you got to keep it professional. We represent, I was at the time, the only director, senior oh, manager, right. only black director in the company. Um, so up there. Yeah, sure. so like yeah. it just really had to be done in a professional way. So I tried to keep that considerate as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what a great start to this love story. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah. love that. So, so we knew immediately, couldn't really do anything about it, kind of felt it, had to wait it out go through the corporate kind of thing. And then when we found the opportunity, I shot my shot. Uh-huh. And, then that, and then that's when things really got interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Let's, let's dive into that. How did it get interesting? Cause you, you talked about your first trip being to Stockholm. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your Erica? What was your like mind thinking? Cause you're like, all right, this man's about to go away on my birthday. Does he really <laughs> care? Because, you know, I know or maybe not. I'm, I might be projecting what others might be. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> because I knew the nature of our job of our I, I work in the business. So I know exactly what he does. Um, it, it kind of comes with the territory. So I knew what I was getting myself into. I know he was traveling internationally. He took the position. So I expected him to be gone for extended periods of time. Um, I'm a very confident woman. I wasn't worried. Um, it, it is what it is. So for me, I felt like this is what had to be done for him to do his job. And if I can tag along <laughs> a few times, you know, <laughs> I'm up for that. <laughs> yeah. Did you know he was going to ask you to tag along that first time? 
I did not. No. You did no. not. It was a total surprise. That was like the first three times first I had times. no knowledge about. So, so Stockholm, China, and, and Paris. Paris. I had no idea that that was happening. That that was yeah. a thing. Um, so, this was our way of dating, I guess. <laughs> so like, so like three years in a, so like three birthdays in a row. Now, now keep in mind, we're we're dating and then engaged not even married yet. And so I'm kind of setting the bar really high for myself. So like our first three birthdays together, <laughs> other than the birthday where I showed up to your birthday party. So after that, after when, we that. St- when we officially started dating, um, were trips. And so I kind of set the bar. I was like, I was shooting my, kicking myself like years later, like, oh my gosh, like when I was trying to figure out what to do. So you created a monster. Created a monster. <laughs> so the first one was Stockholm. And then uh, I was negotiating a deal in, in Paris and they were like, got to be here. Need to be here. I told my boss, can't, at this time, were you, no, you weren't, we weren't engaged yet. You're still my girl. We were still girlfriend and boyfriend. And I was mm-hmm. like, it's her birthday. Can't miss it. Pack your bag. Air tickets ready. I'll pick you up at the airport. This is what we're doing. And so that happened in Paris. And then the following year, I was in Beijing doing again, another nego- doing another deal. Thought I was supposed to be done. He was. The, the thing was extended because they were pushing back. So we kind of went back into negotiations. And my boss was like, Look, I need you here. I'm like, Look, we just got engaged. I'm not going to have a fiance if I'm not here for this birthday. So <laughs> And in China, you can't just buy a ticket and fly in. So you got to get a you got to get a, a visa. It's a process. So I had to get a visa letter. I had to do all this and stuff. Overnight, like, visa. overnight visa. I did all of that within probably 72 hours of him telling me I literally had a visa, packed a bag, hair, nails, all of that done <laughs> and on a flight to China for the first time. But I will wow. say uh, every time she was just like, OK. Like it what was no hesitation. Do. There was no, uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm, yeah, it was never any hesitation. It was always, yeah, down for the adventure. Let's, let's get mm. it. And so, and every time it was, we, we made an adventure. Now I will say when it comes to outside of that, she is the planner when it comes to trips. Mm. So not only hold up, we, hold up, hold up. Y'all jumping ahead of us. Y'all jumping ahead, 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 ahead. This is why I don't give people the questions ahead of time. Right? <laughs> because y'all just jumping all through my interview. You Babe, know what I, I think mean? that was okay. a good jump. Let's, that was no, a natural let's, transition. Let's vibe out. Let's vibe out. I got a couple questions. I got a couple questions. Oh, let them go so, with it. Come with it. Come with it. Come with it. I got you, right? So the, the thing is, I want to really paint a picture for the people listening, right? And, you know, a lot of people are now able to work from home. And mm-hmm. so in these times that you were able to just hop on a trip, whenever he bought, he flew you out, right? It's not like he flew you out and you only have a job, right? She flew out was the thing. She was 12 flew. years ago, 14 years ago. Yeah, yeah I was getting definitely flew, getting, getting flewed out. <laughs> so you was getting flewed out before it was a thing. And now... At that point, were you working remote or you were in office and just using all your PTO time to go? Um, I worked from home off and on and I was a travel project manager at the time. So um, I was taking PTO in the beginning, I think for my first few trips, I was yeah. definitely taking PTO um, and I was like, listen, yeah. I had it. I'm taking a vacation. I'm out. Yeah. Right. Um, so one one thing you mentioned is like a lot of people working from home right now. Like when the pan, when the pandemic pandemic happened, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, this was already a way of life from us. But, for us. Yeah. We already work from home. We were already doing WebEx and Zoom calls. And like this was if we weren't going traveling to a customer location, this was already our way of life. Yeah. So it wasn't a big transition for us. And we'll talk yeah. more about that later. But um, but yeah, so like when it yeah, comes to and, yeah. and for me, that that's key, right? Because I, I think a lot of the times um, people sacrifice, and, and especially Erica, right? Like as a woman trying to prov- prove yourself in your industry, right? Like a lot of women or there are women, I'm not going to say a lot of women, mm-hmm. there are women that will put aside their aspirations of travel and such and such because they don't want to take enough time off, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, my man taking time off versus you taking time off are two different things. Right. If Jackie wants to take time off and I'm ready to go on a trip, she'll get looked at differently because, well, you have to accrue time. You have to do this, that and the other in corporate America, that is. Right. 
And the fact that you guys worked through, all right, PTO will work. It may not work. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not feeling <laughs> well this weekend. You know what I mean? And so just to just to paint the picture, it's not like Erica was just sitting around at home and I'm like, oh, yeah, ready yeah. to go, right? right she definitely. really had to put in like her time to be able to take these trips. Cause you know, what it can seem like to some was like, she was just ready to go. Cause she was, she had nothing Very else true. to do. You Very know true. what I mean? And yeah. I wanted to paint the picture that Eric is a boss in her own accord, you Which, know, and she made gonna, sure she accommodated. A lot into that that when we start talking about travel and her and, and how much of a boss she really is like, this is just kind of setting the stage. Like we haven't even got into like, Boss I'm, a, I'm a co-pilot. She the boss. She runs. <laughs> there, she runs. there you go. You there know you go. how that goes. And so, and so that leads us into the next step, which is the planning aspect of things, right? Because, you know, as a planner, you have to be accountable for a lot of things, right? And if you're planning for both of y'all, you're planning for your work stuff, you're planning for your side business, you do a lot of planning. So let's talk about relationship-wise. Let's start there, Right. Um, when y'all travel, who chooses the destination outside of work related? Yeah, and, and that's where I was going to kind of segue. So where where it comes to kind of some of the work related travel that I have and I was able to bring her along, it kind of started out as me being the planner, um, if you will. Um, and you then because I had a work and schedule came along and she, yeah, those. and I was able to be like, hey, I'm going here on this day. Are you available? Can you take time off? Can we work something out? Blah, blah, blah. So I kind of planned everything, booked the flight, stuff like that. But then if we fast forward a little bit when we started to when she started her transition out of corporate because she finally quit the corporate job and started doing travel full time. This was five years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. um, that's when she really became the, the full on planner. And, and that's when it was like. She plans everything. And that's where it really got intense and like down to the minutia, the detail, the itineraries, like minute by minute, hour by hour. Like I, that's where the concierge score, the concierge <laughs> service was born. And so, like I said, like five years ago, she transitioned out of corporate America, just was frustrated with the whole work environment. The, everything and was just, and I, one day she was crying like just frustrated with about work and I grabbed her by the shoulders and said quit yeah quit just quit like quit. we'll figure it out quit your job we'll we'll figure it out of course I couldn't do that um I was <laughs> like no we need a plan like I I need to figure out like how am I gonna pay my stuff like I got student loans I got car you know I got car note I got stuff that I I know if I start a business you don't get paid in the beginning, yeah. you know, you don't expect to see revenue from three to five years sometimes. So like really figuring that out, I was like, what am I going to do? So we mm -hmm. planned and planned and planned and figured out ways uh, for me to become debt free before I quit my job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we talk about the financial financial literacy, literacy piece, um, mm -hmm. I really sat down and was like, OK, if you know, if we you, live by a spreadsheet, by I, the way. Yeah. I, Excel I, I spreadsheet. We live by that. When we first got together, like I said, I kind of went through a previous marriage and I was you know, re rebuilding my credit, all that stuff. I literally put everything on a spreadsheet. It was something I read somewhere and said, track, know where your money goes. And I didn't know where my money was going every month. So I literally put down every, every bill, every time I spent money, I put it into a spreadsheet and started to realize where my money was going. And then, so when we got together, I brought her into that same, system. Same First and 15, I sit down and pay all the bills. Everything that's due between these time and these time gets paid. I don't wait until the due dates. I don't wait until everything gets paid. First and 15th, when, when I get paid, bills are paid. We know exactly how much money we have to work with. And then over time, I was able to budget because I, I, I can go back 12, 13, 15 all years and tell you what I was paying for cable at that time. Yes. And so... Pull I brought her. <laughs> I pulled up that spreadsheet. So I brought her into that, and it was like, okay, how do we do this? So we sat down. We looked at all of her liabilities, um, all of our liabilities together, and said, okay, what do we need to pay off? Paid off all the cars. Paid off her student loans. Paid off pretty much everything, with the exception of the house. Yeah, and we're still able to save yeah. um, and invest it, here and there. And came up with a plan and said, this is what we're going to do. And and I made it to where I was able to take care of all the finances 
I was able to say sustain our lifestyle without her having to worry about bringing anything additional to the table. Mm-hmm. So put us up. Found, we figured out what I call our magic number. Whatever your magic number is, you need to know what your number is. How much money do you need to have every month to sustain your household? Right. Mm-hmm. Month to month. And then how much money on top of that do you need to be able to sit aside some savings? Right. Or invest or whatever it is you need to do that you feel is important for you. So we figured out what our magic number was. And then we acted on that, paid off all the debt, was able to manage to that number. She Ooh. quit her job and then started paper planes and passports as a Christmas present. We got the LLC. Yeah. We did everything. and was like, now she's official business. This is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. She built the website from scratch. She did like. I'll let you talk more about that, but that's kind well, of. Hold on, let me, let me, can I borrow that? We might want to borrow that spreadsheet. We sure. Need, we need to sell that <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> we, sell that spreadsheet. <laughs> we might want to borrow that spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, I've actually been using, a, um, have you guys heard of um, mint.com? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've been using mint.com since it was Manila when you were okay. tracking your um, bills and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so that's literally how I budget myself. Like mm-hmm. it's an electronic tool and, you know, hopefully into it, send us a check. We appreciate you. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it, it, it literally was, and, you know, Jackie will tell you, I'm a little frugal, right. When it comes to certain things. And for me, the moment I realized I was in an all right place was my bills was automatic payment and I ain't have to worry about like, do I have enough to have fun? <laughs> that's when you know you made it. But, and that's, it sounds like a small feat to some, but it's yeah. huge. Right. right. Cause when you're coming from making little change and then you're trying to figure out which bill to pay that month. Right. That's when the, and, and I appreciate you guys adding financial literacy to your, your, the, the messaging that you're putting out there. Right. Because yeah. A lot of us think, all right, well, you can travel. You just got to save up X amount of dollars and then be good. Some people travel just for that flight there and they can't like afford excursions. They can't afford like food. You know what I mean? I put, listen, I put a travel budget. I put a good amount of money aside every month. So when it accumulates, I'm like, yo, babe, where are we going next? And because the thing is, if she wants to go somewhere, I don't want to have to hesitate as if I don't have it. Right. Like and vice versa for her. She's she's good at saving. She's good at spending, too, but she's good at saving. Right. <laughs> but, but she does both things very well. But right. she also is like, you know, she comes from a lifestyle where. All right. Let's just go. Because we thought ahead of time that, you know what, we want to enjoy these things in life. But it didn't. It took us to have that a level of literacy. Yeah, right. exactly. Same same here. We had to get to that point to understand. And then we were able to have that actually freed us up a lot more. Right. Yeah. Than we really expected, because now, like I said, I don't stress about the bills being paid, the mortgage. I don't stress about any of that. It's really we're really focused on how can we invest more in the business? We could generate more. and that financial literacy piece is one of the reasons why, and I'll let her talk about why we partnered with one of the companies that we partnered with initially. Because one of the services that we offer, um, like you said, a lot of people think you have to have save all this money, you're gonna have all this money to travel. One of the things that was really important for us was to make it financially viable for people to travel, especially people of color. Mm-hmm. So we partnered with another black owned company. Mm-hmm. Oh, layaway tickets, shout out layaway tickets. Um, and they were able to help us organize where we were able to offer payment plans. Cause as you know, the flight is typically the most important, the most expensive. expensive piece, and you have to buy it within a reasonable amount of time or the price could go up. So when you find a ticket, it's a great price. If you don't buy it that day, you come back tomorrow, it could be double. It could be more, it could, depending on the flight and where you're going. So being able to lock in that flight um, as quickly as possible was important to us. So she went above and beyond to find a partner that we can partner with, to, that we could do yeah. uh, part do things. Because if you put it on a credit card, the interest rates are, incre- are crazy. So you're able to pay a small fee, which is negligible compared to what you would pay in interest, yeah. um, make your monthly payments. But then we took it a step further and we incorporated everything. So mo- your excursions, mm-hmm. most of your meals, um, and your accommodations. Your accommodations. 
Um, so we try to get on everything as like much as you can option. on a payment play, payment option as possible. So you make your deposit and you make your payments up until 30, 60, 60 days. days prior to the trip. And so you can budget a you lot. You know how much you're spending on your yeah. trip, which is paid for before you go anywhere. Yeah. Um, pretty much the majority of your trip is paid for before you leave. You know how much you're spending monthly or mm-hmm. and or biweekly if you're making biweekly or monthly payments. Um, and then... You, yeah. You know. Yeah. So knowing is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, Jackie, I don't know about you, but this sounds like a paper planes and atomic travels collaboration. I think so. I mean, I'm just saying. It, 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 here we come. Yeah, let's exactly. And that's what we do. Like in so again, so aside from individual travel, which is what we we kind of focus on two areas. Um, obviously individual travelers or people that want to travel on their own or with their own people and groups. Um, mm-hmm. But then we also wanted to give opportunity for individual travels that aren't necessarily comfortable or don't have the, com- the, the, the travel experience to want to go on their own. Okay. So we, yeah, exactly. So we offer um, a couple of times a year, several times a year group trips that we host. We go on, we're there, we're, we're, we're hosting, we're, sh- showing you the culture where you, you are exploring, you. emerging, saying, embracing, embracing throughout every, this whole trip um, with experienced travelers. With experienced travelers throughout that. And so you can sign up for our group trips. You can also you know, plan your own group trip or your own individual trips, or you can hire us. This is where the global concierge service. So if you want to, you know, you got five or six people that want to go, um, but you guys have never been anywhere and you want us to come with you. We can also go with you on your group trip. So we did a birthday trip for a group of people to Cartagena, Colombia this yeah. year. Um, and they they were like, we want to travel with the Gramps. We watch y'all on Facebook, Instagram. Has, we want to travel with y'all. It's now become everybody <laughs> wants us to go. Or they they want us to be there I'm on the ground, it. making sure everything is perfect yeah. <laughs> while yeah. you're there um, and goes without a hitch. Yeah. So that's that's and then we've also extended that to again to small businesses, you know, small businesses like they need people some. Well, before the pandemic, you know, people had to travel, they had to go, but they don't have the, the, they don't have the capital or um, the the um, the leverage to partner with a large travel agency. So we mm-hmm. focus on small um, black owned businesses that people that need to travel regularly. Sometimes they're artists. Um, uh, uh, suppliers, fashion designers, designers, um, photographers, photographers, anybody that needs to travel regularly and you don't want to have to think about, all you want to do is send an email or a text message, hey, I got to go here on this date, be here on this time and return on this date. That's we already it. have everything in the system. Your profile. For you. Your profile is complete. We can go ahead and book your travel. So we we have a client that wants to go to six places out of the year. We spread those out based on, okay, when's the right time to travel to these locations? Um, people don't want to do the research. So we I know these things. Yeah. So <laughs> we plan it all out for them, which makes more which makes the most sense. Um, financially and for weather purposes or or whatever else that goes along with it, um, plan it all out for them so that it makes sense and allows them to put down a deposit and make payments throughout the year on all of their trips. So they're paying on six trips throughout the course of the year, but they're going six places in one year. Yeah. That's right. not right. normal for the average traveler. African-American so especially. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's more of that now because people are able to work remotely and, and now more people are taking those opportunities Opportunities to travel and work from where they are. But even now we're working with people that want to travel and work. So doing their workations, so to speak. <laughs> so we're y'all out are, y'all are the ultimate cheat code right now. And listen, <laughs> listen I'm going to just say, I may have to hit y'all up a couple of times because Jackie sure. and I want to disappear from time to time. Yeah. And we work, like to we, disappear. We work from home. You know, mm-hmm. We work from home sometimes. You know, what we I'm are saying? working. We are working. Go, go yes. the financial literacy. Piece. Exactly. Oh, this so, part. <laughs> so again, when we travel, um, if we're traveling solely for paper planes and passports, if it's just her and I, how do we incorporate that with the business? How do we make sure we capture all the appropriate deductions and write-offs, things like that? You guys have a travel company, you guys go on vacation. You record your podcast, a, an episode, you take some pictures, 
You do anything marketing. You marketing. You, you have, have a meeting, meeting about you your go business. You see a hotel. You there's ways that Listen, you we can got you. Incorporate. Shh. Give away <laughs> the secrets. No, no, no you got to that we don't know. Those are the secrets that we are know. So you're those right, you're that right, we you have right. to share and, people and like, teach people. They're like, what? I can do that. I have like, a small business and I can actually people like why Trump a billionaire, but he only paid a hundred thousand, he only paid a hundred thousand dollars worth of taxes or ten dollars. Like these are the reasons That's why. why because they're not <laughs> educated on how to manage their businesses um, to benefit you. I still have my full time corporate job. I make nice money, but this allows me to keep more money in our household. Keep bring more money back into yeah. our household. Yeah. Makes like, sense. Makes sense. People don't know those tricks of the trade. Yeah. So that, that's part of what we want to educate people on or what we are educating people yeah. on. Yeah. Um, that's important yeah. for us because we don't know these things. Nobody told us these things. We learned from them. I mean, yeah. We learned from the owner actually Listen. of. I'm so glad I got you guys on because y'all schooling y'all schooling the audience here on some on some definitely yeah. game on how to maneuver right because a lot of times oh Jackie will know I don't like planning I will find the nearest group trip that's going out to where I'm going <laughs> and I will hop on that group trip right. uh, I will find somebody planning something and hop on their trip you know what I mean sure. um and and the funny part is even for our wedding, right? I told you um you guys are doing Morocco, right? I was like, yo, we're doing Morocco. I think we're like a week apart. You guys are going oh, like, wow, we're gonna wow. so yeah. So um I told her, I was like, look, um, I love you, I want to keep you sane. So let's get a travel agent, let's get somebody that will plan everything out. And luckily we were able to get um somebody to help us out with some of it, right? And that's probably, I will say, my only contribution to all of this because she's doing travel guides. She's making sure everybody's dressed the right way. She's getting floral arrangements. Listen, I was like, look, I can only do one thing. And if I can only take one thing off your plate, it's the whole travel situation. And we literally, like, I don't know how y'all did y'all's, but we gave people a cutoff date. It was like, look, if I don't RSVP by this date, yeah. We got because it's 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 international. So RSVP we gotta be, meaning money down. But not deposit, yet, right. I'm going. deposit. Deposit. <laughs> if deposit. You don't have deposit. That's what locks in your yeah, deposit. deposit. If you are going, is it deposit? Yeah, ain't no deposit. Exactly. And so, so for made. us, we had to make sure. Like, I mean, we had to. I had to cut. I cut some people off because I'm like, look, we gave y'all deadline, you know, and if y'all not making it, this is why. You know what I mean? But. He was um, snip, it's, snip, it's, snipping on that on that wedding list. Just, <laughs> just I had like, to make sure. Look, okay, we made not it. coming. They're at not first, coming. but let's be honest. At first, I didn't want to make it easy for people. Right? I was like, man, people want to pull up. They're gonna pull up, do what they do. But then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a nice guy. Let me get a trip planner. She's gonna do all this. She's gonna do the payment plan and all of that fun stuff. And people still weren't doing it. And I was like, at this point, y'all just gotta get cut. You know what I mean? And so it's 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 nothing personal, it's business because it's gonna cost us at the end of the day. You it's know, like they the could group, pull up like at the reception. Chat. It's like the group chat. Everybody's like we we go here and then everybody's on board until you send out okay, here's when you start here, making your deposit. Here's where you make your deposit. Your deposit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everybody wants to go till you gotta make that deposit. Yeah. So um what has been your most memorable trips? Cause I mean, I would have say Every birthday is a memorable when you just started. So, my man, you set already, the bar so Eric high. Already like this is making my head hurt. Even <laughs> right. 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 So, we, always, like, we always get this question. This is like our number one question. Um, for me, it's probably Egypt because that was like what solidified one of the trips that solidified that I can do this as a business. Um, mm. And it was but, trial but, and tribulation but, but, trying to yeah. get there. So you got to tell, you got to tell the story. <laughs> okay. So we were supposed to go to Thailand, right? That was our second hosted group trip. Um, second one ever. Our second one ever. We were supposed to go to Thailand. They canceled our, tr- our, um, flights. our flights like a week before. I mean, everybody canceled. We had, 10 people not the, going. Not the people, the airline. The airline the airlines canceled the flight. Canceled. Right. We mm-hmm. had 10 people going. Um, and we I was in shambles. I was literally crying. I was freaking out because I was like, 
oh my God, I don't know what to do. I literally had to find a whole nother destination that fit within the budget that allowed us to transfer our credits for the flight over and then plan a whole new itinerary in a week because we were leaving in a week. How long <laughs> had you been planning for that trip to Thailand? She typically plans what? Six, six months, eight at least months six, in advance. Eight, eight, eight months, months in advance. Eight months in advance. Wow. All of that and work, a week, a week we before. Yeah. So she All so normally that. eight months, she's like, this is where we're going. Within that time, about six months, it's locked in, it's posted. She's done all the groundwork. And then everybody, you're allowed to make deposits because you have 60 days up until 60 days. before. The, so she tries to give people four to six months of payment. Notice. Yeah. Notice so at least at a minimum, least, yeah. at minimum. But this is where we first started. So we were trying to find the sweet spot. But that's what we had normally eight, six to eight, eight months. months before. She, yeah. And so now it's a week before. Flights are canceled. Everybody's expecting to go to notifications school. are being sent. Emails. People are hitting me up like, oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? This is my vacation. This is my this. This is my that. Wh- what Clients. are you going to do? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> and so I had to come up with something. And so I came up with Egypt. Um, And that actually was probably the best trip because it it really meant something to me because of all one, all the work I had to do to, to get us there and to yeah. make a smooth trip. Yes. Um, and everything was for me to have to plan it in a week. I could say there were no issues. It was perfect. Like wow. so, it, it all came together. She did and that, I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> she did that. Yeah, like, um, but then also the reactions from our clients, clients. Um, they mm-hmm. walking inside those pyramids and seeing the hieroglyphics on the walls and seeing those pyramids standing, still standing there the way they are grown, grown men, men crying. Yeah. Okay. Tears, real tears. Connected. Because they were so connected to the moment, like really and just the moment. how we were able to explore immerse all the embrace. land, immerse in the culture and embrace the new people that we met along the way. I mean, down to we took a picture at the pyramids and we didn't have time to go back and get it. But the tour guide knew one of the guys that took the picture. The guy that took the picture gave it to our tour guide that night and literally brought it to him hours and then away. hours away to make sure that we had the photo of our group together in front of that pyramid. Like that picture is substantial to me because one, how we had to get there to to even take that picture in front of the pyramids, but then how we were able to get that one single picture meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think Egypt just really has a special place in my heart and we're going back to Egypt in April Yeah, and we're adding Jordan just to throw that out there. Just throw that out there. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll promote more. We'll tell you guys about more of the trips that we have coming in 2022 Mm -hmm. and 2023 Mm -hmm. um, a little bit later. But yeah, that was kind of like the moment that was like, she was like, yeah, I can do that. Gave her her the level of confidence to be like, yo, if I can put all this together and switch it all up in a week and make it go that smooth Perfect. that smoothly yeah. like yeah. i was like oh yeah i could do this this is this is my calling this is what i'm supposed to do i i know that i can do this and just to have see my clients and hear from my clients after the fact and how important it was for them to visit africa to visit egypt and the experiences that they had i was like this is this is I need to make sure that people can do this. More of us can experience these things. And then I had to find a way to make it affordable yeah. to uh, create those payment options um, for not only the group trip part, but the flight portion. Yeah. And I will say one, it was the clients themselves were kind of important. I know they're important as a company, but they were kind of important to me. Personally, because yeah. one, this was our second group trip and they a lot of people were from my hometown. And so a lot of times you don't get that a hometown support. And mine too. And yours too. Yeah. But a lot of times you don't get that hometown support. You don't get that, you know, people you know supporting you. So it was very important for that to go off like without a hitch. And so the way that she pulled that off was very important. It kind of set the tone for what we did, the tone for the company, how we wanted to be perceived, how the messages that we wanted to get out. Um, the other thing that was really important for us. And that like, again, that one of the, one of the reasons we started having, the, like on our trips, we have the financial literacy conversation or we have kind of a goals conversation. We make it a point over one of the dinners to just kind of say, 
go around the table. What are your goals? What are you guys working on? What are you guys doing? Because sometimes you don't, you have people that don't know each other. Some people can connect to help each other out, stuff like that. And so that was really important, like that bring that together and like for her to be able to pull it all together. And I think it was supposed to happen that way hey, because we so. were supposed to be in Thailand, but we all went to Africa. We went to the motherland and everyone had such a dope experience. And then being able to have those types of conversations Sitting around the pool and around dinner talking about, I mean, like we connected on family issues, on marital issues, children issues. Like we were all sitting there crying <laughs> at, one point. at one point because yeah. we were it was amazing to one be there having those conversations, but then to have people that feel you people that you can vibe off of people that you can grow from um, in all aspects, not only us, but there were other couples there that we took things away from. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why we love hosting our group trips because we get to be put in a room with people. Oh, we don't know. Who. Yeah. People that we don't know and, and get those uh, that valuable information from each other and get to share what we know. Yeah. So yeah. that those hosting those groups are really <clears throat> important to me. Yeah. Our group trip experiences are really valuable, especially like when we have we always make time to sit around and just talk about like in our Kenya trip, like we had a guys. So we had a round of fire moment with everyone, all the couples. Yeah, that ended up in like tears and crying and then we had guys moment and then the girls Good stayed together like it was- and then it was like so emotional and like the connection was different and then everybody came back together and you could see like it was very cleansing for a lot of people so like being able to walk away from that and seeing like that result to me it's 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 very important to bring that to people and and that's that's amazing because i mean you guys probably gave the best response i don't know jackie um that uh, we've heard since we've been recording, right? Yeah. Um, and you guys touched so many different aspects outside of just the business aspect, right? Is, you know, one of the things that I'm an advocate for is group travel. Um, go with a group, regardless if you know anybody, because you'll always meet people and you never know what you'll experience. But I want to take a little commercial break. You know, you guys are flexing right now on us with this pendant upside down plane and the paper planes and passports. Yeah, I look, I told you I was going to I was going to, you know, dive in since y'all answered most of our questions already. I'm going to talk about this this paper plane that y'all got going on. Like you got a one going up, you got one going down and then your hoodies yeah, yeah. You know, what's going on? You know, so we got these made for us a couple years ago from our jeweler and um yeah. So we're flying towards each other. We're flying towards each other, always. Yeah. Nice, um, nice, nice. And so, obviously yeah, the merch. Yeah. Um, so these are these are coming out. Those um, are new. Th- these are new. These are coming out. The Chanel patch uh, hoodies and square shirts. These are coming out in the next, I would say, next forty-five days. Will be available on the okay. website. Uh, we do have t-shirts have and hoodies. hoodies. These are paper planes and passports hoodies. Stand up a little bit so they can see it. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. the planes and passports hoodies, the paper, the planes, and the passports. Uh, <laughs> so those got are, you. Then we have just a regular logo um, t-shirts and hoodies mm-hmm. that are available on the website today. W www.paperplanesandpassports.com everything paperplanesandpassports.com the and is spelled out but yes. just paperplanesandpassports with an s on the end um but yeah so we do we do do our merch um we're expanding that a little bit um obviously you know you got to have, have multiple streams but we've been getting a lot of requests for merch um, which again yeah. we kind of didn't really anticipate but the streets demanded it so we're giving it um Hey, the streets oh, need a body. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> on her, on her per, this now on her personal page. Every time we travel, because she loves a good beach, she's always taking pictures of her. I love and her a bathing ba- suit. I love a bathing I suit. I love me a bathing suit. So everybody's suit, like, "Yo, where you get that bathing suit?" So I'm like, "Yo, you need to start doing bathing suits. We need to do pay planes, passports, bathing suits." Because everybody's coming, always y'all. asking you. Where I'm suit. and I'm always plugging another company that I got it from, and I'm like, "Why so, make my own?" Because yeah. I love them. Make my own. So th- those are coming as well. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. yeah. So, so we got them. Awesome. Green, well, green. I appreciate that because I was like, man, these these necklaces, Jackie, we might have to steal that. We'll make some type of <laughs> rendition. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Well, you know, I I do all the video and the graphic design. Uh, most of the video, I want to say all of it. I do most of the video. So I shoot drones. I've been getting good. Everything. Y'all. I've been training. She's getting good, y'all. She working. She getting her real game up and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like that's kind of my role. I capture like when we go on the trips. I capture the video i capture pictures i capture drum drum shots footage. everything i sit down and i do edits and stuff like that so we capture. need to talk because you know i do that everywhere i go and <laughs> she just there to take pictures so i'm like i okay. am and even the pictures, I'm, I'm the <laughs> photographer on, unless she books a, 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 a profe- uh, professional, which we do a lot, we do a lot of, we do, yeah. do a lot of professional photographer for a lot of people. I know for us personally, it's always a challenge getting couples. pictures, couples pictures together because we're together and especially when we travel alone. Um, so we always end up getting photographers so that with our clothing line, which kind of how we ended up doing these we have a separate clothing line called gaudy apparel um but anyway with that we kind of have been experiencing doing photo shoots and she used to always set up like again i set up international photo photo shoots shoots, like when i was trying for for the the clothing brand brand. yeah so and so that was another way that i got my feet wet in hosting trips putting trips together planning them all out that was one of the ways that I kind of learned how to do this internationally because I was creative director for our clothing brand. So Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, we need to do this internationally. He was working in Spain. I was like, well, I'm going to Spain, but I'm going to work. And so I put together a photo shoot and I hired five or six models we actually from had, different actually, countries. They volunteered. They, they did they volunteer. volunteered because they wanted to be, they, 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 they wanted, needed, they needed photos. They needed work. And they like, and they liked the products. They, they were like, yo, I really want to work with y'all. And so nice, they got nice. on board with us and that was, you know, kind of a way that I really learned how to do some of the things that I do right now um, with it. I was working 10 years ago during <laughs> doing that job, not realizing that it was putting me in the, in the perfect position for what I'm doing today. Yeah. Right. So. Awesome. Awesome. So adding the, adding the photography. So key. We talked about the beginning of this black excellence couple, right? Um, what inspires you both to travel? Oh, um, I think it goes back to the, well, for me, um, it started when I was young. Um, we didn't travel a lot. But my mom exposed me to, a, and I tell her this story all the time. My mom exposed me to a lot of different cultures through food. I love to cook. And that's an, another thing that we like to do on our group trips is we like to go to uh, cooking, Let's do cooking, classes. cooking classes in the local thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that stems from my love of cooking, my love of food. To me, that's a great way to embrace a culture or yeah. to immerse in the culture is the food, right? Going to the market where they get their food, where they get their food from. Um, like literally going to the market with them, picking out the produce, picking out the meat. How do where do they where do they go? How do what they get types their, of vegetables do they have and fruits do they have important? and use? What what do they commonly spices, use? all of those things? Like going to the people's home, looking at their process for cooking. So to me, I think it stems from that for me, that's where it originated was cooking and food. So my mom, it was funny because when we moved. I grew up in California, but I was born in South Carolina. But moving back to South Carolina, a lot of the family members would say my mom cooked white, if you will. She was the booty Because cooker. she cooked all these different things. She cooked Chinese food. She cooked talk, like Mexican. She cooked all these different things from different cultures. Mm-hmm. And that was my way to go places without being able to go places. Yeah. Mm. So that inspired me a lot to travel. Um, and I think that's where my love with travel kind of stems from and being able and which also extends to our mantra, which is explore, immerse and embrace, explore right. the cultures, immerse fully into those cultures and embrace the people, the things in that culture. And I, for me, a lot of it starts with food. Sitting around the table, breaking bread is one of the best ways you can get to know someone. Yeah. Uh, even with that story, when we were in Kenya, we did a cooking class. We literally went to the market on the public transportation on a bus um, and we met our guide. She cooked us. We got on the bus. We went to the market. We bought all the ingredients for our meal. We went back to her home, her home. 
and sat around with her family and she showed us how to prepare the meal. We all prepared the meal together. And then we all sat down and we had the meal, ate the meal together. Um, now, we're doing that again. And we do that in every time we go to Morocco as well. Now, keep in mind, this wasn't some fancy chef. Well, this was some or uh, home. This home, was a regular lady with. This was two her kids, business. With two kids. This is what she, this is her hustle. This is what she does. So everything wasn't perfect. It wasn't like everyone had like special cutting boards. Everybody Sometimes you're, apron. everyone didn't have an apron. Sometimes you're cutting like right on the, on the countertop. Like it was a real, like authentic experience. Authentic it was a, experience. it was definitely an authentic experience. Yeah. Um, and to answer your question for me, my love of travel kind of started with us. Um, when, when I got flewed out, (laughs) I I got bit by the, by the travel bug. I was traveling domestically, um, throughout the country. And I really loved that. And I loved the, the variation of my job where I wasn't going to the same office and seeing the same people every day, every week, um, day in and day out. So being able to travel for my job, definitely, Opened you opened up. my opened my eyes that there are other places there are other states as growing up I didn't travel a lot we always took road trips down to uh, Mississippi and Arkansas mm-hmm. where my mom and dad are from but mm-hmm. other than that or to Michigan where some of my other family lived but other than that we didn't do a lot of travel growing up mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. my travel really started when I started working for corporate America when I got out of college and then when I met him internationally um, and. Like I said, Sweden kind of just bit me and was like, yo, you need to be doing this. Like, you need to see more places. What what else is out there? Where else can I go? (laughs) And we just started moving and grooving and doing it. And I knew that was something that was my passion. I had to turn my passion into a paycheck. (laughs) And that was something that I love to do. And being able to give that gift to other people and that experience to other people is it is something that just warms my heart. See, after my but after my clients travel and hearing the review, some of them call me on FaceTime when they get to their hotel, like, yo, my room is this, or yeah. you upgraded me to this, or you surprise upgraded this meal or whatever. Like that to me. It's fulfilling. Um, that yeah. warms my heart. So that giving that experience because we have traveled, we are well traveled, um, allowing the opportunity for other people to travel really just fuels my soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we're gonna get into some tough questions right now. Okay. <laughs> tough questions. Uh, <laughs> see. Say by the book. Um, <laughs> so, alert. Alert, so, alert. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned um, you guys, you, you, Erica, you met, you traveled um, domestically. You traveled internationally. Um, traveling while black is a real thing. Yeah. We know here it's, it's, <laughs> it's hit and miss depending on where you go, but yeah. tell us about, your individual traveling while black and then traveling while black together, if that's changed people's perception. Yeah, I'll go first. So when I was in corporate America, I mentioned that I traveled throughout the United States um, for my job. Right. And I would have to go into North Dakota or even Michigan or different places that you didn't see a, another black face all week. I had to go to Walmart to find the black people. Like, <laughs> literally, that was where I was. But I didn't really see, especially in the healthcare technology, it, working in healthcare, um, in the position I was training, the um, administrators, the executives, the, the the pharmacy directors. And so I didn't see a lot of black people working even in within the hospital, especially in some of those smaller towns. And mm-hmm. so I, I have had instances where they didn't respect me or they didn't appreciate me because I was a young black lady um, working and teaching them how to do their job, t- training them on how to fix their job or um, better. do their job better um, with implementing the new technology that we had. And so th- that didn't sit well with a lot of people, honestly. So I ran into that traveling domestically. Now, when I went international, they was like, what up? Like, I I have never 
it, to this day, I don't think experienced any issues traveling internationally as a black woman. Mm. Um, I've always been well received. Um, I know I hear a lot of stories about China, going to China, being black. My experience in China being black. Yes, they wanted to touch my hair. Yes, they wanted to touch my face. I have a slender face. So they think that that is a sign of beauty. But I asked the questions to find out why. So I wasn't offended because mm-hmm. I understood why they were trying to touch my hair. One, they don't see a lot of black people other than on television. If they even have a television, we were in Beijing and a lot of people that travel to Beijing are from little outskirts. smaller outskirts of cities of China. They don't have TV. They yeah, don't the see. Wall. Oh, and, and on the Great Wall, he was literally attacked um, because he <laughs> couldn't not enjoy attacked. not attacked. Not attacked. He couldn't enjoy the Great Wall of uh, China because his he wore the size 12. So everybody was walking up to him trying to put their feet next to his feet and take pictures. Everybody really legit wanted to take pictures of him because they thought he was an athlete. Was he athlete. gets that a lot um, a as a black man, as a black traveler. And he's tall. So they automatically assume that he's an athlete and I'm the woman. Now in China, (laughs) they didn't even like I literally got pushed out of a picture because the the man wanted to take a picture of him. And I got in the picture, too. You know, Okay, yeah, we're going to take this picture. He was like, nah, lady, (laughs) not you. Not you. Yeah. China, only place in the world that I've ever been with her where they wanted to take a picture with me more than they wanted to take a picture with her. Everywhere else, they're like, oh, she's so beautiful. She's just, we were in China on the Great Wall. The guy's like, oh, let me take a take a picture. He couldn't barely speak English. He wanted to take the picture. So I'm like, cool, we take the picture. I'm standing there next to him. And I'm like, come on, come on, babe. Get on the other <laughs> side. She gets, this does this. <laughs> you? Uh, I'm with her. I'm with you, sir. And like, I'm it, like oh. I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Never had that happen before. But typically, I get, I get it. I, I get uh, people, and mainly in China, people uh, in Singapore, Spain in, in Asia, in Asia, oh, in, in Spain, Spain, you got the athlete as well. Um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he he gets the I, athlete. Yeah. Um, and and that is some, why I got we're some traveling. Funny stories about like leveraging my blackness. Uh, <laughs> yes. He so, does. so so again, sometimes your blackness can work to your favor. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So again, similar to what Erica was saying, I didn't mean to cut you off, babe. So mm-hmm. I didn't know if you were finished, but um, similar to Erica's story, um, traveling domestically, you know, we've been to 43 states, 40, 46. 46 states, sorry, 46 of the 50 states, right? So everyone is kind of their all little small country, if you will, mm-hmm. right? In their own little small, they have their own little nuance, things like that. But I've, been to most of them. I've had some kind of definitely had more racist experiences when I was younger, moving back from California to South Carolina. But as I got older and was moving around, it was kind of less, but nonetheless, they were there. And you can tell the racial undertones, things like that. Um, I did have one experience where I, when I was in Missouri and there was this, I was training the nurses and one of the nurses fell in love with my name, white lady, fell in love with my first name. My first name is Chanticleer. Mm-hmm. And she fell in love with my first name. And at the end of the week, when I was getting ready to leave, she came to me, she was pregnant, came to me and asked me, could she name her child after me? That was weird. And I was like, no, I don't think that'd be appropriate. I don't know your husband, but he probably want, would be happy. This is what I'm thinking <laughs> in my head, that he named your child after a black man. Like, I'm, I'm probably not cool with that. So like, that was a, that was a weird experience, but n- never anything like overtly racist. Um, I've had experience. I've always been, uh, because I have a military background, I feel like your, your, your presentation is important. Um, so every time I go to first time I go to a customer, I'm in a shirt and tie where you might have my white counterparts there in a polo shirt. Um, but the first time I meet a customer, I'm in a shirt and tie because I already know there's a certain stereotype if I come in looking a certain way. Right. So I'm trying to counteract all of that right off the bat. Um, but so my experiences were a little bit different. Um, but I never had anything like really I wrote up, y'all. I got never had anything really overt like call the n-word or like really yeah i i've kind of been like what he doing here kind of situation but then when they found out who i was and like oh he the man let me do what i need to do but Mm -hmm. i've always presented myself in that way 
Um, but similar to they Erica, didn't care about me. But similar to Erica, like going internationally, I've never. They been, think he's a music I've, producer. A, I get rap to. I get rap to everywhere. He get, oh yeah, everywhere we go, he gets auditions. Whole rap. I get their best the, raps. The athletes. <laughs> um, I'm basically anything but just a regular average African American traveler. Man, traveler. <laughs> like I'm everything except that, and I don't know if it's the way I dress. I don't know if it's my. I don't know what it is, but. Like I always get an audition. Hey, bro, li- listen to my music, and they want to rap to me. And then, which is funny because oh, I kind of dabbled funny. in the music business too. But they don't know that I'm not there looking like <laughs> that, presenting that. Um, there's been situations where I was like, I was with some my white coworkers. <laughs> we were in Dubai, um, and we were at a dinner. We had just finished the trade show. I had a couple of Turkish guys with us, and a couple guys from the UK and we were at dinner and they wanted to go downstairs to this nightclub, super exclusive. I've never been there, never even heard of it. So I Googled it real quick while I'm at the table. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's nice. We should go there. So I told the guys when the waiter comes back to the table, I said, don't say my name. Just say he wants to go downstairs to the club. So the waiter comes back and said, and, and the guy, the English guy, kind of big, he says, hey, he wants to go downstairs to the club. So the guy says, kind of looks at me. He looks around the table, walks away, comes back. Sure, we'll, we'll walk you right in. Now, keep in mind, this is exclusive club. There's a whole line of people outside. He walks us into this back door. Like, literally, we're playing the role. I got these two big Turkish guys standing next to me dressed one is black t-shirt black pants so they're looking like security i got these three english guys so i'm just looking like the man right now we walk in they walk us to a table and sit us down walk past the whole line and everybody's looking like who is he who, the fuck is, who is this guy who is he <laughs> so that's one of the situations where i kind of leveraged my blackness because yeah. nobody was gonna know who i was but it was right. just like Here's it how we, here's how we do it, and they were like. Nice. And so after that, they just call it. They started calling me. Uh, oh yeah, you got. They started it. calling me. They started calling me DJ Shanty D because that <laughs> night, my UK counterparts determined that I was a fame, an international famous DJ. That was a story, and they're just gonna. We're just out having a great time. He got his name shouted out on the. They radio. shouted me, shouted me out on the mic. Shouted it was them out on the mic it was, on, on the. It was crazy. So um, yeah, it, it's oh, it's crazy, wow. but you can leverage your black your blackness. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I just I just get asked if I need some of that loud everywhere I go. That too. Well, like, that happens we, we that again. Leveraging your blackness if that's something that you're into. You partake. I, I, I you always know? get off. Always, always, always. We were with the, the this uh, white girl. We, we were. We at? Oh, we were in Guatemala. We were in Guatemala on a tour, and she was <laughs> California. She's been looking for weed for like three, four days. Yep. We were walking with her on an excursion. We're just walking through the little market and the dude came up to me. She was like, what? He been, I've been looking for this for like three days. And she he just walks up to you and just me. offers it to you. I'm like, she wanted. Here you go. Got you. <laughs> she was like, this never happens to me. How did this happen? And she acknowledged. She was like, yeah, I guess that is something that as a, a brown person <laughs> it may happen to you i was like i honestly yes it does no you know we we didn't take offense to that but because it, it really does happen like that yeah. um yeah. but she was like thank you you know i appreciate <laughs> you because i've been out here a whole three four days looking for it, asking people for it and i don't and everybody you know, looking at her like, like nah, i'm, like 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 I'm not about fight. to <laughs> So, so, like you said, I've I've right. never had, I've never had a bad experience. Yeah. Like I've been to international, Sa- internationally, Saudi Arabia. They embraced me. They actually think I'm one of them because uh, I one of my coworkers. I look like them, and I hung out with with them. Like I've just never had it. Now in Par- in in France, I witnessed Africans being mistreated because a lot of the Africans have come there, and they're hustling they're trying to make make their way this but as soon as they find out you're not african you're african-american they get treated differently yeah yeah because they're infatuated by our culture i tell people our number one export is music hip-hop and r&b everywhere there's not a culture there's not a country that i've been to and haven't heard hip-hop and r&b yeah 
They know the songs. They know the words. They may not be able to speak English, but they know. I have a video, one of the one of the probably most liked videos on my Instagram. I landed in China. <laughs> the driver picks me up, barely speaks English, just has a little sign, my name on it. Hop in the car with him. He starts driving. Like, Yo, put some music on. He was like, what do you, he tried to ask me what I want to listen to. I said, no, play whatever you're playing. So I wanted to hear what he was listening to. Play whatever you're playing. Mm-hmm. Yes, play. If you don't know, now you know, nigga. nigga. <laughs> and right after that is pop. pop. And right after that is Wu Tang. <laughs> and right after, it like, it just, so for the whole 45 minute ride, I'm listening to all my favorite right. 2000 hip hop and R&B hits. Like, it was a great ride. Like, but that's one of the things. Like, I think that's why I've never had a bad experience internationally i think it's because of hip-hop i think in sweden they just looked at me weird because they just hadn't seen a lot of uh, me (laughs) before like or a lot of me out there um in stockholm and in china were probably the two places that i experienced but even but even in stockholm i met a dj oh shout out to dj corona my homie still to this day Always, always shows us so much love whenever we come to Stockholm. But DJ connected with him, all the parties, anywhere he wanted to go. He's always like, yo, whenever you guys are in town, really great time. We make real friends when we travel, like when we're out there, just. So when we go back, we always have people to connect with. Or if one of our clients goes somewhere. And when our clients go, we always got the hookup. Uh, We are the global concierge. And we can literally put you in contact with people that we have encountered and had amazing experiences with. Um, I think that's one of the values of working with us is that we are experienced we have those connections we we've done this before we do this <laughs> have we done it we oh, still do we it still to this do day. it um, listen listen y'all y'all ain't listen you this whole this whole time you've been telling us how bossed up y'all are i don't know i don't think you need to convince people any much more <laughs> you know what i'm saying um so with that being said like like i said i appreciate the story that was that was really dope because it's like it tells us that you know international travel is not the same as domestic and everyone's experience is different so with that being said we all are coming out of a lockdown um, some of us never locked down Florida, Georgia, Texas. Right? <laughs> we live um, in Atlanta, so to say, to say the <laughs> least, we don't self lock right? down. <laughs> right. um, so, what does your new norm look like, right? And and we're gonna also throw in as a business, how has the new normal impacted your business? Because okay. you know, New York City is in the brink of shutting back down. Mm-hmm. Um, I think other major cities are, are on the brink of shutting back down. Atlanta, of course. You're also planning a trip to Morocco, which currently is shut down, and we yeah. don't know when it's going to, you know, change its status. Yep. So how yep. is... How is... How is well, what's the me, new normal I, looking like for you? I am peeled. You want to go back to, the like, the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah, I can, I can go let, back, let, and let, I'll bring let, you let, forward. Let me, let me just set it up a little bit. When, <laughs> when shit first hit the fan, part of my language... She was I freaking out. She was, <laughs> she was freaking out. This was like Egypt times twenty times twenty, because we didn't know that anything. was travel. Is that was the business? Yeah. Yep. She was like, "How am I going to make money if we can't travel? Everything is locked down." And I'll let her take it from there. But she was like, like I, I didn't know what mode. to do. I, I literally yeah. did not know what to do with myself for a while. But then. I eventually was like, okay, I saw as countries were opening and I just, I was peeled to the news. I was peeled to the internet, Googling the travel state.gov of every country, looking at where you could go, because that was the questions that I was getting. So I felt like during that time, I needed to keep best people abreast. That was the best thing I could do was educate people. Where can you go right now for those people that were working from home, for those people that could, wanted to get away um, and that were willing to do that. Here's where you can go. So I started posting and just telling people what was open, uh, what were the requirements, um, what you needed to do, helping them while they were on this on the ground, um, getting their COVID testing. Because at first, uh, hotels weren't 
offering COVID yeah. testing um, at the facilities so or at their property. So just finding places that were doing COVID testing, what are their costs? How do you get there? Maneuvering that, building that into itineraries for those that were willing to travel you, during that time. You have, to know, you're, you have to know how long in advance you have to have with documentation, every country, because nothing is consistent. Every country is slightly different, Everybody's different different requirements, everything. So Instead and those of, things change too. And it changed. Exactly. And so people don't do the research. And that's so, where she ended and that up. That was what I put my focus because I was like, I can at least give information for those that wanted to get out there and, and travel. Um, and for us, we were taking road trips and, and <coughs> about how we were traveling safely. We to this day, we still have not had COVID. Um, and, and we've and traveled, we've been all over the world. We've hosted for, group over, the trips. La- over the last two years, we were nine countries, nine, this, countries. nine countries this year. And then last year we did at least four. Yeah, we did four. four. International so we probably countries. 13 countries during this whole pandemic. We got out there and we were like, safely. we can do this. You can travel safely, but this is how you do it. Yeah. yeah. These are the recommendations on how you do it. This is how you get to these places um, and you get in without any problems or any turnarounds at yeah. the airport. Um, and then how you get home yeah. and, and how you get home COVID free at that, <laughs> <laughs> most yeah. importantly. Uh, so that was kind of my focus during the, the first wave of the pandemic 2020. Um, and then as things started opening up, I kept posting about how you same get thing. in, same thing. Just kept on keeping people abreast. Um, here's about, where you can go. Here's okay. where you can go. Here's what you need to go. Requirements. All the requirements. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the the new normal is just keeping abreast of. Every, I'm a news watcher. I pop on the news in the morning. I pop on CNN. I pop on everything. She might go. I'm googling she, travel. She, she, she's gum. googling travel. I'm googling like, and she's focusing on that part. But I'm like, yo, babe, hey, did you hear about this on the news? They're stopping this, and so she'll do additional research. So we kind of do our own. So just keeping abreast of the changes. I think that's kind of the new normal, and keeping our clients or potential clients abreast of how you can travel, where you can travel, the safety precautions you should take. Um, things like that. So that's kind of been the new normal for us is really just educating people. Um, yeah. Towards the end of last year, we were able to get, like you said, open up a few group trips um, towards the end of the year because people, by the end of the year, people were like, I got to get, 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 get out of here. I just got to go. So yeah. I think we, we did tell them for, uh, New Year's Eve. for New Year's Eve. Now tell them we've been doing for before anybody even knew about before tell them. Before Tulum got popping. Before Tulum was, got that popping. That was like one of our, that, I that was our sneak, that was our sneak away like, spot. That, is that my, was our undercover spot. Like nobody knew about it. We would just go there. Five years ago, we went seven, there. Nope. Was it, it, was, seven? it was at this point now, seven, eight yeah. years ago. Okay. So even then we was hit and told them and nobody knew about it. And Nipsey it was, put in a video and then like everybody was like, everybody, Tell oh, we going there. And now there's all kinds of things happening in Tulum. Um and but then we did we did Tulum. We, we did, did Costa Tulum, Rica. Costa Rica. Um, which is, and again, for us the I think the main thing that changed for us on the actual travel was again not making sure again like she talked about make sure you have your COVID test, you your entry exit requirements, things like that. But then also making sure we adhere to um staying contained with the group that we're with. Um so not interacting too much with other people, making sure we're wearing our masks because everyone's tested, everyone's that we're with is was COVID free. So we try to keep ourselves kind of self-quarantined if you will or isolated as much yeah. as we can. Right. We so, took 27 people to Columbia in June of last 20, year. Yeah, 20 plus people and so not one got COVID. Not one came back with COVID. We all left safely. <laughs> that wasn't the case um, for some people that I heard that I heard about that went on another trip, trip with another company. Yeah, but, that whole group got COVID. We literally were saying, hey, you guys, like, I think the, the main thing while you're traveling is you're drinking and then you're at the bar and you have your mask on and you start talking to random people. And that right there will get you COVID. For disaster. Yeah. <laughs> so just trying to maintain our group staying. I mean, we had free time and people went out and did their thing. But I was like, hey, reminder, you guys. It's still COVID out here. Like we are in the middle of a pandemic. Wear your mask. If you're talking to strangers, wear your mask. Or step back. And dude. step back. Don't and, let people and just ran people like people are touchy feely, especially the people trying to sell you stuff. Like they're all in your face. So just be aware. Like don't don't get com- don't get too comfortable. 
Um, and I think that's the new normal for us, is just not being too comfortable, staying educated on what the requirements are in and out. I think my biggest fear is probably actually getting COVID while on a trip. Um, because I'd hate to, to stay there. I'd have to I hate to be stuck somewhere for 10 days or however many days you have to be quarantined before you can fly home. That's like, probably my biggest fear. So I'm like super cautious, always got hand sanitizer. Yeah, I'm like, hand the hand sanitizer clip to my bag. Um uh wipes, like wiping down everything, just being just building in those processes, I think is very important yeah. as a traveler. If you're going to be out here traveling, you need to develop what works for you yeah. and develop your process so that you can stay safe. I'm, I'm, I'm big on process and doing the thing, doing things the same every time. Mm-hmm. So that way, when something, when you don't, when you miss a step, you realize you missed a step. Yeah. Like even oh, when oh. COVID first happened and we would go to the store, oh. we had a, pro- I had a, had a, I had a process. process for bringing stuff in the house. How do you do it? You bring the stuff in the back door. Everything gets set by the back door. Boom. One by one. You At go, first, wiping you, it down because we didn't know how you COVID wipe everything was down. getting past. Then so. you put everything on the countertop. Then you put everything away and you wipe everything down. And then you go take off your clothes. And then you put all your clothes in the washing machine in a bag. Like immediately. Like, it was a whole, like I'm, a whole, a whole I'm a process thing. person. Like, like So when we travel, we go to a room. Everything gets wiped down. Lysol, disinfectant. It's I'm very much a process person. So making sure you have good processes that work for you um, and keep you safe for me. I've now passed those on to my clients. It sounds like you guys are getting towards where I actually want y'all to get is the tips, right? So so process, right? Make sure you know where you're going, um, the rules and regulations of where you're going. Um, So, you know, for people that travel, that's great. But what are for your newbies? What are some tips for your newbie travelers? Oh, well, again, um, work with me, and I got you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one tip. Number, number one rule: work, work with paper planes and passports. You don't paper planes and passports. We tell you everything. No, you need but to for those people that do, like, there are some people that like to do their research and they like to actually, you know, travel on their own and find their own trips. I would say that's the number one thing: um, do your research. Do your research. Read, read, read all the fine print. Know where you can get a test. And, and like, that's the thing. A lot of starting uh, January of 2022, a lot of hotels are no longer offering the free COVID test on site. Yeah. So you now have to pay for that. So build that into your work your budget. in your budget. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not staying on a resort, then if you're staying in an Airbnb or some other property uh, that does not have it, where are you going to get a test from? How is how long is it going to take you to go get that test? Um, what is the transportation like to get that test? Mm-hmm. People don't think about those things until they're actually there on the ground. They're like, oh, my God, it's going to cost me one hundred dollars just to get it in an Uber or a cab or whatever to get to this test. And it's going to cost me one hundred. And, and test prices are rising yeah. um, in these countries. For you to exit because it, it's now um, it's a it's, it's a business. It's, it's a whole, whole it's a whole industry in, now. Te- COVID testing is a whole industry I now. I wish I would have got into it. We can get, we can get off our own testing to go on the trips. That's we've got to figure but, that out. Yeah, knowing, <laughs> budgeting, thinking it all the way through. If you are going to travel on your own without a knowledgeable travel agent, or if you have a travel agent that does not provide these things to you, then you need to make sure that you take the time and read and read and read and figure out what the steps are, what is needed, budget all of these things. So the last thing you want to do is get there and realize, oh, it's going to cost me hundred dollars just to get to the test, a hundred dollars to take the test and a hundred dollars to get back to my accommodation. That's three hundred dollars. You just blew right there and you didn't even know you had to blow. So thinking about all of those things in advance and being able to budget yeah, I think I think the number one thing is, especially right now, is the COVID testing and planning and making sure you understand the requirements to get now getting to, back to, to get States, there and to get home. It's changed because that they and, and follow up. Like you might read something today and it changes tomorrow. So consistently, mm-hmm. to even on your trip, double check because something can change while you're on your trip. Yeah. Because before it was 72 hours if you're back, before it was 72 hours period, then it was 72 hours if you're vaccinated, 24 hours if you're non vaccinated. Now it's 24 hours, period. Period. If you're vaccinated or not. So So to get back to the United States, things could change while you're on your trip. When you're in these countries, 
being able to get a test, making sure that you can get a test and planning for that and then they in advance your, and then get your results back in time. I was going to say, not only get it, not only getting the test, but making sure that they can actually provide, because some places they can't get the results back in 24 hours. So you could take the test 24 hours, but you don't have your results. You can't board that plane. Now, they, I mean, well, most they are different. accepting the rapid test yeah. um, to come yeah. back to the United States. So it's rapid and PCR. So most of the time with the rapid test, you're good. But if it's backed up, and they can't provide that information. I mean, what are you going to do? You need to make sure that they can. Which, um, which I ha- say which call. Happened to us going going to Mor- going, going to, to Morocco. Morocco. We our, literally didn't get our, our test, test back. Our test didn't come back. Going to Morocco, we got clients already on plane in route. We had to reschedule our flight the whole, whole night, flight the whole thing for the next day. Book a whole new flight because I was like, book it right now. We're going the next day. We'll figure out the credits and all that stuff. Because she was already freaking out. I was out. freaking out. And he just took the lead and kept me calm while we were literally in the airport waiting. I just before. booked we another flight. Like, we'll figure we out the credits later. Board, like the very last second that we could check in, the lady was like, we'll come back, just hang out for a while. If the results come back in, then y'all good. But if not, then y'all need to start making a plan. He started making the plan. I started freaking out, but and also <laughs> contacting <laughs> everybody to let them know yeah. what was happening we were going to be a day late getting there, but we, everything worked out. We made, was everything was good. We had proper planning. So everybody yeah. was good to check into the hotel without us and to, to do everything that was needed. Yeah. Hmm. Things, things like this happen. Things like this are going to happen. So what you need to do, another thing, if you're going to be traveling Let's on your own, calm. you need to stay calm and you need to plan, plan, plan in advance. Like you got to plan for the unexpected, like plan for things that you can't even possibly think are going to happen. And that check, is what I do. <laughs> and, and, and another thing I would probably say that's probably important. Check with your carrier, your phone carrier, because a lot of people don't realize one or two things happen. Either they just go and their phone bill is sky high. Um, and they haven't like done it or their phone doesn't work. Doesn't work and at it, all. Doesn't work at all. And the last thing you want, you don't want is your phone to not work because if you get in a situation, you need your phone and you, you situate. So make sure you understand the status of your phone and mm-hmm. how it can operate in that country because you need to communicate in the case of emergency. And what the fees are going to be for that because yeah. when you get back and you get your phone bill, that's uh, something else you got something else, something something else you you a budget for, for right? So again, little things like that, people don't think for like, you don't think about how much it's going to cost for you to get an Uber, how much is going to my phone bill going to jump because I've been making international calls and I've been surfing Instagram. Uh, like cause at home, you, at home, you're just usually doing that. You're just taking a picture. Let me post this on Instagram. Let everybody see what I'm doing. That's costing you. By the yeah. by the milli- by the not, by the megabyte. Yeah, if you're not on Wi-Fi, that's oh, definitely yeah, costing exactly. you. So just things like that. Um, so COVID status, make sure you understand how your phone is gonna be work in that area. Um, making sure someone has the ability to contact you, know where you're going, um, mm. kind of at least knows where you're gonna be staying, has a high level I- idea of your itinerary if you're traveling by yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, just and in case just anything FYI, happens, when you're expected to be back. Like things like that, like for my clients, I build in, you have a digital itinerary that you can share, share, you can look at offline on your phone, on your, any of your devices. So you know where you need to be. So we plan all your, your whole itinerary, right? You have your flight in there. You have all of your activities, your hotel information, because when you're arriving in these countries, you have to know where you're staying. They ask you Sometimes, all of these things. Yeah. Um, you have to fill you out all this know what stuff. they're going to ask you. Yeah, you have to have all of this data. So I put all of these things into your digital itinerary. So you have it handy. Mm-hmm. And um, also, you know where you need to meet your tour guides, if they're going to pick you up. Um, your COVID test, what day you're going to get it, how much you're going to cost, all those things built into your digital itinerary so that you know where you need to be, what you need to have with you. Because a lot of tours, you may need your passport now. If you're going across country lines on a tour, you may need to have your passport on that day or, or you need to have your vaccination card. record. Sometimes they might take a picture. Sometimes you have to have the, the, physical. the physical copy, knowing those things in advance is crucial to the success of your travel. entire trip. Yeah, especially like I said, if you have if you don't travel a lot, yeah. 
No, no, the requirements of the country. Just hit me up, y'all. I got you. The, the easiest thing to do. <laughs> that's that's hey, easy. Basically, all that to say, I got if you. All else fails. Contact all paper plates and passports, and they got country. you. Yeah. yeah, if you don't want to look up all of that stuff, contact. It, 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 perfect it, it, marketing it, it, strategy. Stress everybody out, and then say. Okay, I got you. Just if you need to, yeah, exactly. let me give you all of this information. Don't even worry Make about sure it. You're it. totally horrified about doing it yourself, and then contact exactly. us. We got you. Exactly. So, so, so to wrap up, tell us where we could find you and what what you guys got going on. Okay, so like I said before, www website www.paperplanesandpassports with an s at the end dot com paperplanesandpassports dot com. Um, Instagram at paper planes and passports individually where Mr. I'm Mr. Foreign Exchange One. She's Miss Foreign Miss Ms. Foreign Lindsay. Exchange with, with a Z. Um yeah, and everything paper Facebook, plan- uh paper planes and passports, passports everything, everywhere else is paper planes and everything passports. At, everything <laughs> hashtag paper planes and passports when in doubt. <laughs> Well, thank you both. Well, we would like to th- trips. go ahead. Talk about the trips. For go ahead. The trips. Yeah. So we have um, Egypt and Jordan in April, um, April 13th through 20th. And then Morocco is in May the 28th through June 4th, May 28th through June 4th. Um, we have Hobox in June, Hobox, Mexico, um, which is kind of a tricky place to get to. Um, it's Juneteenth. New, cele- hit, new yeah. hit the spot, like kind yeah, of like tell them. Yeah, and it's um, where we're celebrating Juneteenth there um, and just celebrating and relaxing with our people. Um, we have, I just dropped our South Africa trip for new year so the 27th so tomorrow you will next year you could be arriving in <laughs> in uh, south africa we have zambia and then turkey is coming up and also uh bali for 2023 mm-hmm. so just hit the website and you can actually subscribe to each trip um so that you get updates on each trip and then just subscribe to the website in general and you'll mm-hmm. get the the mailings blogs newsletters all everything uh, coming to you. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to thank you all, you both, for really sharing with us um, and really doing this, right? I literally hit you guys up and you were like, no problem. I got you. I mean, you joined so, my live one day and <laughs> we've been connected ever since. So I there appreciate you it. And I just wanted to return the favor. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Show you what a true love's about. If it's real love. That you want